we have a precious word to share with you this evening, and I uh, we hope you're available to hear it. Uh, it's a word from on high, sir. Please come into my house. Oh, thank you. Would you like to show me around? I would love to. This is where I watch my TV. Ah, yes, the TV. This is where I like to think about a lot of stuff. On the couch. Not too much, though. The couch. Come this way, sir. I'd like to show you my bedroom. It, uh... Ah, oh, the bedroom. You play guitar? No, nothing serious. I just, just play around with it. Yes, I do play guitar a little bit myself. Um, I'm not so good. I'm kind of a novice, but it's not me who plays. It's the word of the spirit that rings through on the strings as they vibrate. And uh, it's the tone of the instrument that gives great. voice to the word of the heart. Should we go to another room? Um, yeah, I'll show you my bathroom. I can't sit too long. Ah. <laughs> uh. You know, sir, you have a beautiful house here. Thank you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your life? <laughs> tell me about the memories and the experiences you've had in this house that you well, sir, there's been ups and downs, and I feel mostly I'm just fine. None of us remember what it's like to be born. None of us can remember the pain of coming into this world for the first time, and of seeing the blood, and seeing the reflections, and the shadows on the wall, and not knowing which one's which, and not remembering the spiritual world that came before, because it's gone. The minute you come into this world, you're like a blind person up into a big pile of nothing and you're trying to make sense of it, feeling with their hands and speaking with their voice and reaching out and seeing these blurry reflections on the wall, which is which, what is what, but I can tell you that this is not something that happens for one time in your life, this will happen again and it will be the second time, the second time you will be born is when you will receive Jesus and remember that he is the one who let you be born in the first place, so why not celebrate your birth again, why not celebrate it like the first time, consciously reaching out, grabbing hold of his tunic and bringing it forward, putting your arms around me, putting your arms around him and putting him into your heart because he's not a physical person but a presence that you can put inside you. Have you ever wanted to feel that feeling of having another person inside you, being with you at all times, through the times when you're angry, through the times when you're upset and crying on your pillow, and all the other times when you don't know what to do with your life because there will be someone with you and there will be a voice that you can hear and it's a voice you must trust and even though you will fail, you will fail, you will fail again because you are a human being and there is no success for you without Jesus. There's nothing you can do without Jesus. There's nothing you can do without changing who you are. There's nothing you can do without admitting that you are nothing in the face of the Lord above you who decides every action, who creates every tree, every stream, every river, a whole world around you that is coming to you every day relentlessly your perceptions, you cannot shut them out. You cannot shut out the grace of the Lord. It is with you. It is with you now. It will always be with you. You will never be able to turn your face towards the shining, happy face of the Lord who sees all, is all, and will always be everything that is now and was before. And this is grace. This is acceptance. This is humility. 
These are the favors of the chosen people who have admitted that Jesus is the one who allows us to be human in the fullest sense. Not shadows, not worms, not squirming beasts of the earth, not monkeys, nothing but a human being who can perceive a greater good, a greater cause, a need for change, a need for ascendancy. You're not an angel, sir. I'm not an angel. We have faults. Everyone has faults. We have sin. Sin covers my face. Sometimes I feel like I want someone to just tear me apart and throw me to the dogs because I'm worthless. I'm nothing. Rip my head off. Tear my insides open and throw me out. I'm a corpse. I'm nothing. But that is a weak, weak thinking because I am someone. And that someone is a fragment of a greater someone who died on the cross for us 2,000 years ago, who took the world on his shoulders and said, you sinners, I'm dying for you. I die for you. I will rise again three days later because I can never die. I will always live. We will always live insofar as that we trust these words. And I feel that I've allowed myself to grow very excited in your living room here, sir. I've come into your house, I've been mild, I've been accepting, I've looked at your things, and I've nodded, and I've laughed, and I... But in my heart was a growing rage, a growing turmoil, because I could see that you were not saved, sir, that you had nothing to offer me that I did not already have, which is the Word of God, and there's nothing I need further than the Word of God. And then, although you can show me your things, you can be with me, you can talk to me, you can tell me about your life, your hobbies, your understandings, none of it will mean anything, sir, unless we can communicate fully in our hearts, unless I can share my heart, my dream, with you as you sit on the couch, and you accept also what I say and reflect it back into me, and this is the only way we can communicate, sir. And I knew there was something missing, and I began to grow sad as I looked into your room. I began to go despairing as I looked into your shower because I knew there was a gap between us, a failure to communicate that on a fundamental level, sir. And now I am growing more excited, more exceedingly excited because I can tell that I'm breaking through your heart exterior and being able to connect to you mind to mind, sir. I've got so excited. I've got joy in my heart, sir. I've got happiness. I've got joy. I've got love, and it's not able to keep me down on that couch sitting next to you. It's out getting me up in the world, making me happy, making me sprint with love, making me leap in the air. Oh, but I don't want to leave, sir, because I have respect for your things. I respect what you've earned, but I know that if I can just communicate, if I can just keep your ears and mind open to these gracious words, the gospel is what I'm speaking of, then I I will have accomplished a great goal here, which is to protect another person from hell, from burning forever in torment. You think that you don't believe in hell? You think it's a crazy concept? You think there could be no such thing as hell, that person burning forever? You think it'd be meaningless after a while, like they just burn all the time, and so sooner or later they don't feel any more pain because they're just used to burning. That's not what it's like, sir. It's every moment the pain intensifies again. Again you feel the pain. It's not like you remember the moment before. Again, it's perpetual pain and fire. And every one of your sins comes back and haunts you in a grotesque way. It's transformed so you experience the guilt, the shame, the envy, every one of your sins again anew, fresh for the first time in each instant, for eternity, for a million, million years. And there's no hope for redemption, sir. Not without Jesus, not without the Bible, not without the voice of God, the Holy Ghost, all these things. There's so many avenues to the Lord. It takes humility, submission, it takes kindness, it takes caring, it takes a gentle voice, a gentle soul, a receptive soul to hear these words, to get on your knees for the first time and to accept the Lord Jesus into your heart. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Oh, you got a sponge? Um, thank you very much, sir. I guess if that's the question, then the answer is 
my life. I just does pose other questions, but um, when troubled, and I have been, sir, um, I believe your kind words, and I believe the faith that you have in Jesus, but I believe the faith or the belief that I have does not come from a, um, a God, sir. Uh, I beg my pardon, or Jesus Christ but comes from, um, I don't know if it's a word or a meaning, but I think it comes from the world. And I think that world, sir, is not much different from the world that you believe in. And I thank you for coming here, sir. And I thank you for saying those beautiful words. And I think the way you say them inspires me and touches me, and perhaps you could give me your card or a way to contact you, because I think what you've done here is really beautiful. I think it's really special, and uh, I'm not going to say that I'm a Christian today, or even perhaps tomorrow, but sir, I'm going to say that I'm your friend, and I want to say that I'm going to see you again, and I want to say that we're both alive together here, and I mean that, sir, and I want to hug you. And I want to say, you're my friend. My life, my life. Playing those guitars. In blue, it cleanses my aching soul with blinding white. You came to me when darkness was my sight Is it right that blue? My spirit first with love and faith in you Is it true? It's true 